limit and discourage the over-fertility of the mentally and physically defective. Many point to a 1923 New York Times interview as proof of Sanger's racist motives, in which she referred to people as weeds, saying, It means the release and cultivation of the better racial elements in our society and the gradual suppression, elimination, and eventual extirpation of defective stocks, those human weeds which threaten the blooming of the finest flowers of American civilization. Hayden Ludwig, an investigative researcher, has extensively studied Sanger's life and writings. She talked about the need for race betterment through, through controlling these weeds, basically undesirable people. In 1939, after opening another clinic in Harlem, the birth control activists launched the Negro Project, an initiative supported by black leaders, such as civil rights activist W.E.B. Du Bois. Critics claim the program used the pretense of better health and family planning for poor blacks in the South as an attempt to limit the black race. Ludwig says some on the left grapple with Sanger's past and how to interpret her legacy. They know when she writes about human weeds, they, they know that it's that it's it's repulsive. They know it's disgusting. The left will never abandon Margaret Sanger. Because if they do, the, she's the foundation of so many of their views. Sanger once shared her vision for a preferred race at a women's branch of the Ku Klux Klan, writing in her autobiography, Always, to me, any aroused group was a good group. Despite those views, liberals praise Sanger's work while ignoring her history. I admire Margaret Sanger enormously. Her courage, her tenacity her vision. I am really in awe of her. Ryan Bomberger, founder of the Radiance Foundation, says abortion proponents are working to clean up Sanger's past and what she stood for. They have to reinvent her every time they talk about her in order to justify their celebration of her. Former Planned Parenthood director Abby Johnson says those inside the abortion industry are trained to overlook Sanger's racist views. They give you an answer like, well, I mean, yes, Margaret Sanger was, was a racist, but everybody was a racist back then. You accept it because she is your hero and she has to be your hero. You cannot question Planned Parenthood. In 1997, Stephen Mosher of the Population Research Institute wrote about the push to repackage Margaret Sanger in the Wall Street Journal. The reason I call it the repackaging of Margaret Sanger is because after uh, the Nazi regime destroyed the legitimacy of eugenics forever, uh, they then went back and said, oh, she was just an early uh, feminist. She was just an early supporter of, of family planning. No, she wasn't. Now, she was a supporter of, of giving IQ tests to people. She was in favor of using those IQ tests to determine who should be sterilized and who should have ch children. In a response titled The Demonization of Margaret Sanger, Alexander Sanger, her grandson and president of Planned Parenthood at the time, called Mosher's editorial unfair. In the same piece, Esther Katz, director of NYU's Margaret Sanger Papers Project, claimed evidence revealing... Sanger did not rationalize her support for birth control on racist grounds, that she never advocated genocidal policies aimed at racial, ethnic, or religious groups, and that she, in fact, believed access to birth control would benefit, not eliminate minority populations. Dr. Katz turned down our request for an interview. Although in this article, the editor as public authority, interpreting Margaret Sanger, she wrote... By our current highly sensitized standards, some of her attitudes and statements can be construed as racist, elitist, ethnocentric, and not politically correct. In 1942, Margaret Sanger's American Birth Control League became Planned Parenthood, which has moved to fulfill its founders' goals, helped greatly by the Supreme Court decision in Roe v. Wade. Under the veil of secrecy and deception, 60-plus million babies have not been born because they were aborted legally since 73. One third of that population belonged to the African-American community.
a frightening and telling number given blacks make up only 13% of the U.S. population. Dan Gaynor of the Media Research Center says that Sanger's true mission remains alive and well throughout today's abortion industry. Look at the maps. See where the abortion facilities are. They are near places where people are marginalized, people are poor, people are minority, and that's their, that's their target market. Generation